All right, so um, I guess we want to take this here. Whew, okay, didn't know Mets not be doing this video today, but there's something definitely I've been meaning to get off my chest. There's a bunch of stuff that I always wanted to say, and if it's trains or cars in the background, just try your best to hear me. If you can, let me try to back up a little bit. No, I think I got to move forward because, you know, you guys wouldn't be able to see me. So those say I'm watching, this is like mainly for the core audience. At least that's like the initial plan, but I think, you know, probably majority of our audience will want to hear and listen, you know, uh, to, I guess, what I have to say or <laughs> stuff I'm about to lay upon. I don't consider myself like one of those super dude or, you know, wisdom kind of people. Um... I often find myself in positions where I help people and for you guys that do message me saying you no know, thank you and that I helped you you know through what you were going through and you didn't excuse me you didn't commit suicide because of it and sorry I'm kind of like mixing my words here just all it's, I don't know it's all a lot to me you know I think all you know my life I've been you know different but i think that's the beauty of humans like themselves even in the generics there are always people that are different people that differ from each other and you know i learned that you know from here in the streets you know you see people as children they grow up and then they all become kind of like you know fish in a bowl the same of a product but you know you knew these people beforehand and you know there's more there to it um you know, I have a friend who uh, passed away I, uh, last year, Ivan, you know. I feel like the crowd that he hung around didn't really get to know the real Ivan. I knew him since we were about nine years old. And I I know who the real Ivan is. I know what he likes, what he doesn't like. So I know his real personality. But when you get caught up in, you know, the business that's around you, sometimes, you know, bad things happen, wrong place, wrong time. You get tied up in a bunch of nonsense. So... You know, the, the initial squad you was around with, the one you was putting the face on for, you, they don't really take a, you know, the chance or take the time to really get to know the real you. You know, they just know what you portray to them. And the certain people put themselves in certain positions to survive, which I can't even blame. I, I done had demons myself to where I'm out here just acting like a, a, a fucking fool for no damn reason. But, you know, you guys knew me, I guess, six, seven years on YouTube. You see that guy, and you see me now, and you see two different people, you know, at least personality-wise. Some people, you can still see the enemy, to see, you know, still see the real me. And, you know, I appreciate those people are special kind of people. But, um, back to the initial, you know, use of this video. I'm going to be rambling on that. This is mainly a vlog, but also, you know, this video, just a purpose video for anybody that may be feeling down, depressed. I done seen a lot of your a lot of your stories and messages. Don't think I haven't seen them. If I have not responded to them, I'm at work or I'm busy. One thing about me, I am a very busy person and I am way too busy for my own good. This is freaking ridiculous of how busy I am. So, yeah, uh, first off, for those that have been through trauma and pain and you have lost, you know, children, friends around them, um, my heart is with you. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's always hard to give these, this is why I don't like making these kind of videos because I feel like, you know, we all kind of say the same thing. Like, oh, I feel bad or my condolence. It's the same fucking thing over and over and over and it doesn't really make anything better that's why I'd, I'd rather you know physically see you guys and physically hold your hand or hug you let you know that everything is going to turn out you know fine for you and then that may be a lie you know that's just what I believe because you know as we know life just happens at any random time I don't gang bang I don't do none of that shit I know things can get dark, but that's, you know, the type of area you live in. You know, I grew up with that kind of mentality. Um, but, like, these past, you know, you guys know these past few years, I can you say a few months, I actually had to sit here and you not know, feel embarrassed to say this. A few years, I've just been going through mental fucking trauma. I had PTSD, people, and I realized this basically, I think, about six weeks ago. You know, I'm walking outside. And somebody's like a 15 year old kid runs up on me. Now, mind you, he's not running up on me. He just wanted to get to the car ahead of me. I almost turned around and, and did something really dangerous to him. You know, I'm guessing I'm not fully over what happened in, uh, that night where uh, I had gotten stabbed as much as I thought I was. Um, I don't think I'm fit to be licensed to carry a gun at all. And I think it's rather dangerous enough. <sighs> 
I'm rambling now. And for all of those who uh, find my videos and my music coming you know, to their spirits of what they may be going through or what they are going through, what they were going through, and have somehow got through it, <laughs> first of all, thank God you know, for you. Now, you got through your, your, um, your trauma, your pain, but, you know, um, I just want to say thank you. You know, you guys don't have to watch every video. You guys don't have to listen to every music scan I release. All of my music thus far has been uh, for free. I think only music I will sell probably is the help album, but I really kind of want to get that away for free. And that won't be coming until 2020. 2021 is the worst case scenario. If something happens. I'm just hoping I get everything out. And I feel like that, that project will actually save, you know, the world. But that's just how I feel about myself. I believe I do have the voice to change people's hearts. Um, change people's minds and often you know times I do feel like a hypocrite because you know down here I'll be letting a lot of shit get to me you know especially with these damn females and I feel like it's a freaking it's like I'm, I feel like it's a, I don't want to say a habit because it only happened twice you know but I feel like every time I get hurt by a female I just I just get on record and I do them as worse as I possibly can. I don't want to be that kind of person. You know, it helps me get through it. And to be honest, it's way better that I did that than what I initially had planned. Because I wouldn't be here. I'd probably be in jail or dead from somebody's revenge already by now. So, I'm happy that I do have music as that outlet. I just need to figure out a more mature way to release that music. Um, and trust me, in the future, I'm going to do that. But I don't plan on getting my heart broken again. But as we say, life just happens. For those who listen to Stay Alive, if you guys have no idea what Stay Alive is, mind you, you guys, I make these YouTube videos here. And I also make music. I'm kind of new to the music scene. But this here, Stay Alive, is my second initial project. And if I have to open up and be honest, it took a very long time to get this out. Um, I started writing, writing this um project i believe a little bit over a year ago but you know i guess you guys you know know in july when i had got dumped again i'll be overreacting so i feel like i don't know but i love too hard you know i had this conversation with my father by the way if you guys don't know you know me and my father you know me growing up i had haven't had the closest relationship with him i lived with him my whole life but our relationship always has kind of been bad. You know, I never came to my dad for advice. My dad hardly came to check on me how my, uh, how my mental was going. In fact, he never did. I think I just, I had to bring it up to him. And it was just always, you know, narcissistical. I, I have nothing to come with my father other than the fact that, you know, I look like him. And, you know, I guess I get my intelligence from him as well. Because I react off of anger. That I get that from my mother, hands down. You know, I definitely overreact. You know, that's me. But yeah, Jesus, I think I've done myself off um kind of off track here. But I'm talking about mental health. So, you know, the mental state I was in, you know, after you know last year, July, was one hundred percent suicidal. Um several attempts, and this is not the first time this happened. This also happened in two thousand and sixteen. This also happened Man, that been... That's the train. And I've never told anyone about this, but, you know, in seventh grade, you know, I definitely tried to commit suicide. I tried to hang myself several times. And, you know, it didn't work because everything I tried to hang myself with, it just wouldn't hold. My neck would just break this shit. I know some run-on joke that I have a husky-ass neck, but, no, that's... That's like dead ass. That's a real thing. My neck was just too strong for the, the ropes that I did try to find. And... It's, I don't know, it's, cause you, it's like you see this stuff on TV all the time and you never you know, imagine, okay, that can happen in real life to somebody else, let alone yourself. And when it does happen, you're at a standstill. You don't know how to tell people. Like, what if I was 13 telling people I've tried to kill myself? They probably would have told me. Because, like, a lot of people in the black community, and I'm going to be specific to that, a lot of people in the black community, I'm being specific on that, don't necessarily take mental illness or suicide, you know, seriously. You know, a couple of months ago, I was at work, and the guy was talking about how his, you know, his uh, niece and somebody passed away uh, due to suicide. She's, and he's like, "Man, I don't know why she do that. Man, we don't do that. You know, the the term, like the the phrase, the quote, we don't do that. What do you really mean by like we don't do that? Black people don't kill themselves. Black people don't go through mental trauma. I think we go through it more than any other race on this planet. 
That's just my personal opinion. I had PTSD. Self-diagnosed, obviously. The fucking doctors were him. Um, Tell me I had that shit. In fact, if I commit a crime right now, they wouldn't tell. If I was maybe a lighter skin, they'd say, oh, he had PTSD. They'd come up with any excuse. But, you know, I'm black. I get demonized. So this guy's in the gang. Yada, yada. I, you know, it just happens. So, you know, me writing this project, the Stay Alive project, it wasn't just about, you know, my ex had just told me, oh, I'm about the whole project. No, this is not 13 Mistake. This was something serious. And the initial name for the project that I had in mind it was not stay alive. Stay alive was my apology to God to what I had initially planned to name this project, and that was R.I.P. Mikhail Batson. You guys don't know what R.I.P. means. It means rest in peace, obviously. And that was the initial, you know, name for the project. I had a completely different cover art. Only, you know, DR3, Michael Young, and Kevin Jr. have seen that. And then I had created an entirely new one when I had changed the name because... You know, I felt so bad, especially, you know, towards my engineer, because at that time, I was 100% sure, okay, I'm going to write this music. The woman I'm dealing with in my life, fucked up. The people fucked up. It's just a lot of people kept turning their back on me. And mind you, I believe in reincarnation, so, you know, my mind state, if, if it ends now, I get to start all over, all, all over again. You know, I get an entirely new life, life new memories. I'm going to have to deal with this or that or this or that. And... And I had to quickly learn that you no know, suicide doesn't really hurt you, hurts the people who are around you. But I like I knew that, but I wanted to be selfish. I said, no, fuck all of that. I'm just gonna get rid of this. I don't care about anything else. And it got to the point to where I didn't care if my mom missed me. I didn't care if my dad missed me. I didn't care if my brothers missed me, my, my sisters, my nieces, my nephews. I didn't care. I did not care. And a lot of people would call that selfish. And I, it is a little bit selfish, but I feel like that's more of a sickness, you know. I feel like you shouldn't call somebody a name because they feel that way. I think the first, you know, form of action should be to help them or try to see what's in their mind. Like, so show some kind of understanding. Because some people are in that state, they feel alone. They feel like they're the only ones going through it. And I feel like calling themselves is okay. Cool, call themselves. I'll do the shit anyway. You shouldn't call people names or down people when they're already in a in a in a state like that. Like even at work one time. Um, I had a man. Well, she, I guess she's still a manager. So told me because she's in high position to me that she's more important than me. That I am her underling. And it, mind you, I'm going through all this shit that I'm telling y'all about when she tells me this. So in my head, I'm just I'm just angry because I'm like, what if she's right? Why why not go home with this end this shit now? And that's why I feel like a lot of people in the black community really need to take mental health seriously. Because I feel like only, you know, us, like, we're the only ones that's not doing it. It's me writing R.I.P. Mikkel Betts. And that was a fuck. I was going to write the shit. And as soon as I released it, I was going to kill myself the day after. And I was going to hope that, okay, I still love my friends even though I'm gone. Hopefully this will create enough buzz that somewhat they can somehow eat off this tape or, or anything. Something that can help, you know jumpstart their careers even to you no know, further heights you no know, out of just sympathy for my freaking death if, if anybody gave a fuck you know and that was my mind state okay at least something good might come out of this some people might get some you know money and some you know invest generational wealth i, I was just hoping giving me myself any excuse any other reasons just so i could kill myself and just get the fuck away from it and get away get, just get away with it and I was going to have my engineer work on all this shit, mix and master all of this shit. And as soon as he done that shit, I was going to just be rid of myself. And that's the code honest truth. Had I not been lazy, and that's the only reason why I'm alive, alive today is because I was lazy. You know, I was supposed to release the project last summer. I was going to release the project, but I got heartbroken. So it's like, I can't do it. You know, that was, that, that's what pushed me over the edge. It's like, shit, I got to write this. I go, oh, yeah, I'm going to end this shit. And no, then I find out more shit about the situation and shit. Like, you know, I, I, you guys seen the past videos. I don't necessarily give a fuck about that shit anymore. I feel like my, my biggest problems with relationships and women is that I looked at them something, as something different than what they truly were. You know, had I, had I went into it, I'm like, okay, this girl is this, this girl is that. I wouldn't have got hurt at all, but... I saw, you know, I'm not going to say it's bad to see the good in people, but what I did was just ignore all the flaws, and that was just my fault, you know. A lot of these flaws I've seen from the get-go, from the jump. i seen it from the start. I don't tell my friends anything, but then I, I'm the one who's acting all surprised when 
these f people in in or females talking about people in general because I got friends that then turn their back on me. But when these people are consistent with their behavior, I play victim, and I feel like that's something that I need to learn from. Because it's like, well, technically she did do this, did that, or this nigga did do that, do that. Why am I upset that a switch up happened? All they did was the same exact thing, but to me, you know, they were consistent to their characters. And it's only up to God to change, you know, that, you know, for them or if they ever decide to involve. So far, I can be honest with you, they ain't involved at all. Maybe some people are just stuck, they're stuck that way. Excuse me, they're, they're stuck that way. And, you know, you can't fix it. You can't fix everybody. And I guess maybe because I know at heart I want to be a healer. You know, that's why I speak with my voice. That's why I make these videos for y'all. That's why I'm starting to make music. I want people to hear my voice. Not so I could be all rich and famous and have, you know, be the center of attention. But I honestly feel that I can help people. I didn't get that confidence on my own. The DMs, the messages I've been getting for years saying my videos help, you know, people at home. Or I don't have any brothers. I get picked on the school. So watching you helps me through life period and it's like man how many lives that i freaking saved by accident so if i'm doing that maybe this was god's plans for me so I, i'm not gonna say i'm doing god's work but i feel like you know this is what i'm meant to do i found my calling i found myself and i'm happy because a lot of people they don't get to find themselves they try over and over again beforehand they you know before they know it they got a thousand problems before they found themselves a hundred fucking bodies nobody want to love them no more male or female and it's like they find out too late and then that's when the depression gets deeper i don't risk depression on anybody not on my worst enemies not on none of my exes not on none of my enemies i don't wish depression on anybody i don't had i wished death on them before absolutely i will be honest i have now I'll be honest i just don't care if some of them i don't care I still don't care. Maybe that's something I need to work on. Maybe just something just that just uh, isn't my business. But, you know, I would sound like a hypocrite because I'm trying to heal. Yet, you know, I don't care if people are harmed or certain people. So that's something I need to work on, you know, my character. You know, I need to be consistent. I need to be consistent in that. I need to get to the point to, I'm like, you know what? I forgive everybody. I, you know, hopefully you know, I need to wish the best for people. And that's something I've been lacking yet because of, you know, my personal anger, my personal pain. But when you're helping other people, sometimes they say you have to put yourself aside. But I feel like you have to put yourself first. Me putting myself aside in these relationships were the reason why I felt so low when it was over. Because I put something else above myself for the first or second time in my life. And then it crashed down. So I had to make sure I am in a good mental state. This is what my father told me. I had to make sure I... I can get up on my own and walk on my own two feet before I help somebody else up. I can't be crawling trying to help people stand up anymore. And then I want to give this video to you guys unedited because I feel like unedited is more like a whole truth. It's more real. It doesn't get more real than that. So that's why I'm just going to upload a video. You guys hear the trains, you hear the, you hear the cars, everything's authentic. I just want you to guys know that I love you and that I'm sorry for basically writing a suicide letter when I was writing the Say Live project and I got to say sorry to DR3 and sorry to Michael Young and sorry to uh, Kevin Jr. and sorry to Aunt Anthony uh, Moore or Aunt Timmy, that's his stage name. Sorry to Kai Exile, my best friend James, I knew since I was like freaking nine years old. I had to say, you know, I had to apologize to you. I haven't talked to them about this in person because I be, honestly, I think I'll, I'll cower. I'll cower if I try to tell them. I feel like it, I don't want them to see me crying. Because I, I always want them to feel like that I'm okay. Because I know that they aren't okay. And I, they see me maybe as a light or somebody who's always happy. Somebody who's always joking around and playing too much. You know, I, I'm uppity. I'm, I'm more upbeat around them. Because they make me happy. And I feel like if they see a pillar like that crumble, maybe there is no, no hope for anybody else or you know, you know so some some something to run those lines some crazy shit so i always had to help have them see me smile or some sort i don't think i let anybody any, any one of them see me cry yeah only person probably seen me cry was dre and, that, and that's when i had you know blood you know rushing down my face and when i was in a hospital even when i got stabbed i wasn't even upset that i was about, about to die i was just set off the way about it because like oh man this is kind of corny and that was it i only thought about that and i thought about the youtube uh videos and the fans that now 
you know, sent me messages saying that I helped them get do something. That person has died now. And I'm not going to say I got too much on my back or no, I would take the world upon my shoulders and and guide it, you know, do you know, positive transitions of their mental health if I could. But I have to get there first. And for some reason, I'm God put me in this position where I'm not all the way there, but I'm getting people there. I'm confused. I'm not sure what's, a, what's supposed to be going on. I have people telling me you got to be 100% before you help other people. And now, but it is not happening this way. I'm not 100%, but I am helping people. And I don't know what, what to do. I'm not sure if I'm doing this the wrong way. And I, I'm not sure if this is the right, the right video to make. Sorry about that. Damn, this wind side. And I tried to, you know, express myself with the music. And 13 Mistake was definitely a bad example. I was just angry. But I'm guessing you're really express yourself, you express yourself. But stay alive. I feel like I did it perfectly. And that's why I do encourage you guys to go and listen to it. Not because, oh, I'm trying to get rich. And no. Give me the listens. That'll be nice. But I do want you to find any track or if every track in that tape helps you i i, I got messages of people saying you know what kind of tracks they relate to some of the tracks they say they related to them like holy shit i thought i was the only one going through that i thought i'm over here to speak in my my truth my my peace my sadness my pain you went through that shit too that's crazy As they say they relate to certain songs i'm like yo how do you relate to that song you went through that too and it it's like and it excites me but it makes me sad at the same time because it's like Somebody else went through that pain? Somebody else felt that way too? That fucking sucks. But it made me feel good because the way you guys view me as somebody who's been through pain and you guys feel like you're not alone when you guys say you've been through it too, I feel like I'm not alone. I feel like I made a new friend, a new best friend, and it makes me happy. It makes me generally happy that people are listening to my music, that people appreciate my music, they see my pain, and they acknowledge it, and they continue to support me. You know, it's not all about the, the money and all, all the famous. Sometimes you, people really need to need to hear that one song that will save their life or help them get through their day. Just to put a smile on their face. And, you know, a lot of music nowadays isn't about that. That's why I give you know, a lot of credit to Juice World and, you know, XXX Tentacion. I got a freaking tattoo in remembrance of him. And it, because he legit helped me get through, well... I'm getting through my suicide, <laughs> suicidal thoughts because of him, but getting through my depression. You know, beforehand, the writing the Stay Life project, I would legit think of suicide 10 to 11 times a day. We're down to like two to maybe three times per week, and that's really good progress. Uh, it's not good, but it's good progress for me. I'm having, I had a really great week, some great friends, and I feel like God, you know, especially everything I've been going through, has faced me. In front of my enemies Out of these last 30 days On purpose And when I say he faced me in front of my enemies I'm serious I'm not joking He put me dead, dead in front of him Because you know me going through that dark space I'm telling myself there is no light left in my heart If there was to be a way out of this You know I wouldn't feel this way Or I try to guide towards that light And that's that you know Faith was diminishing God took his own time to put me and place me in front of people who I consider enemies out of these last 30 days just to see if I would do something. If I did something, then okay. Then, um, yeah, I probably did fall too dark in that hole, like I said I did. And, you know, I'll be, I guess, considered an evil person or an entity or somebody who just doesn't do shit good and I have failed. If I chose to relax... And not, you know, join the fray and, you know, do some damage or try to kill people. If I just stayed sane, then they'll prove my small theory, right? That there is still some kind of light in my heart. If not, I would have went the opposite way and just did some super shit that would have got me in jail. Or even possibly killed out of somebody else's revenge. So, I would have been, you know, I would have felt victim to my own cause. And me trying to do some stupid shit, then it happens to me. So, he did that. I stay calm, I stay collected, I have fun, and I kept a smile on my face. 
And now I do have faith that, you know, that old Mikel from, you know, 2013, 14, 15 still does exist. And I can find that love again. I can find that smile again. And I can find that happiness again. And that's what I'm going to go, you know, towards now. So I'm not going to take a break from the music. I feel like that's, you know, me going through that. And I guess I do have to thank them. And I, I had to stop calling them enemies. They're just regular humans. Just like me. Just like the people watching this video. None of us are broken. But all of us are special in our own way. You know, everybody's just trying to find themselves. So I guess I still had to do that one performance. But I'm going to do that. You know, shout out to Adelio for you know even putting in the works uh, with that. I'm still gonna do that shit. If, uh, hopefully, <laughs> we can do that. That's just for all shits and giggles, legit. But you know, after that performance, I will declare nobody, you know, as an enemy. You know, me making this video, I feel like it's self healing, you know, in itself. And I just want to thank God that I got friends. Like I, I'll still say their names. You know, Mike, Dre, Ramik, Kev. Even our, our, our Delio, like <laughs> Kai Exalt slash James, Sean Gamble, my brothers, my sisters. I feel like this journey, this video, this is where it all leads to. It all leads to paths to, you know, my forgiveness and me forgiving certain people that hurt me. And it's gonna just awaken some kind of beast for me to write this uh, next album. And I have saved several lives with the Stay Alive album. And it's a free album too, the link in the description, you know, all of that good stuff. I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of speechless. I feel like I just went through a whole self-realization, through a whole cleansing. It's like I'm talking, but I'm having an epiphany at the same time. This is what help is. Holy shit, I'm, sitting, I'm standing here, I'm, I'm standing right in front of it. This is what it is. You know, I can't take all the credit to myself, you know. I had started, you know, a group. You know for helping people specifically you know like us like you like me somebody in south carolina somebody in kansas or wherever you may be you know the kai family you know kai you know obviously the the name you know give or take is i'm not going to say taken but more so inspired or influenced by dragon ball z by me and my uh friend james aka kai exiled of me being kai mazaku and are we looking for recruits? Yes, we are. <laughs> so if you're a dope ass artist and you wouldn't mind slapping that Kai in front of your name. Kai means light, something positive, regaining, rebuilding. You know, I feel like we, we came up with our own definition of what Kai means. Instead of letting other people tell us what it means, we came up with our own definition of what Kai means. And you know, I feel like it's going to help a lot of people. We, we not only give speeches or videos like this, like I'm talking to you guys now. To help them do their, you know, mental issues. And mind you, I'm still new at this. So I'm all shaky and everything like that. And I've been making videos for seven years. But I feel like this is the first time I legit got up here. And I got to pour my complete heart out about how I feel about everything that's going on. And what I'm going through. You know, it takes a, it takes a lot out of a person, not just a man or woman, just to really say how they feel. You know, you, mean, you, you can feel terrible the whole day. It takes that one person to say what's wrong, and then you break down in tears, and you don't, you don't know why. These trains are coming. Yeah, and you don't know why, you know, you're feeling this way or why you just burst out in tears, but it's happened to, you know, the strongest of us. I just think, you know, maybe like we're, we're so close, we close ourselves in this box to where we eliminate all people that nobody cares. And it takes that one person to say, what's wrong or what's going on? And then you break down because one, it was an unexpected blow. Holy shit, this person may care, may, may care for me. And I want to tell them how I feel, but I keep freaking crying. Why do I keep crying? Why can I tell them how I feel? Why every time I'm about to say a word, I get choked up and I start to just let everything out. We're not used to expressing ourselves, you know, especially, you know, especially some men, you know, we're, we're raised to be strong, don't show any emotion, all this and that, and we're not, we, we, we're not used to the playing field of, you know, expressing our, our feelings and emotions, and when we do do it, you know, sometimes people take advantage of that, you know, I had people, especially, you know, women in relationships, I told them my pain from my past one, and then they imitate that same pain towards me, and then... 
make sure if I do have a worse, you know, stature, obviously. And it's like, dude, what the what the fuck? You know, I have people when I'm comment on it on these videos that I make. You know, saying they feel bad for what I went through. I go out with them, they do the same exact shit but worse. And it's like, are you are you are you serious? You can't be like fucking come on. No, and, and it, it's more confusion than, you know, hatred or anger. But you go through your phases. I've been through my phases. Am I still sorry about situation? Yeah. Did, did I, I want to see my enemies or did I want to see those people uh, these past 30 days? No, I did not. But it just coincidentally, they happen to be in the same place, place as I have. I don't, I don't know. I don't know what that was. I didn't know what the message was through God. But I'm pretty sure what I just told you guys. If I was going to do something... Than I would have if I wasn't. If I was going to really go towards this direction of seeing the light and helping people, then I would have just did nothing. And that's what I did. I did nothing. I find no shame of what I did or what I didn't do. And that just told me how strong I was because I didn't think I was that strong. I was under the pressure. If I see, oh, it's going. No, I was just chilling. I was just chilling. You can't fix everybody, but you can fix you no know, the ones who want to be fixed. I want to be fixed, so I strive to fix myself. Um, I don't depend on anybody to fix me, but I don't push them away if they try to, because then I'm trying to fix people. It'd be weird if I just I know you can help me, but I want to help these people. No, I I am willing to accept help. Um, you guys have been messaging me, uh, you know. Checking on mental health. I love y'all to death. I know I'm not always there available. I'm not there to answer the Facebook call text. I am working. I said, look, I'm way too busy for my own good. I swear to God I am. And it's like, dude, I don't know why, why the hell I'm this busy. But at least I'm doing something. I feel like if I wasn't this busy, if I had too much time alone, too much time to myself, I wouldn't be here. I probably would try to do something. But in the current mind state I am in right now, on this day, on April 1st, ironically, 2019, I can say, I do not want to kill myself. Suicidal thoughts, and to this day, I, no, I don't. I don't. It's not a bone in my body, not a freaking cell that says, hey, kill yourself. I do not want to do it. And I hope it is, this is not like some weird all switch to where it cuts back on and something stupid happens. No, I want to live. And I'm going to live. Um, I've been going through trauma. I had, as I said, I have PTSD. I have dreams, daydreams, premonitions of my own death, and I think it's happening soon. But I pray to God that I live a long, very, very, very long and healthy life. I want to live to 80, 90, 100. I'm talking that long. I want to have generational wealth. I want to see my children, my grandchildren, my great grandchildren grow up. I want to see my great great grandchild be born. I want to see all of those things, and I want you guys to see them too. And you know, if I can just probably name drop some more of anybody, you know, for the YouTube community specifically, he yeah, had checked on you know my mental health. First off, shout out to Don the Baller. That nigga's a dope ass artist. And yes, you're gonna get that hard copy, bro. You're gonna get the hard copy of the Stay Live album. As I said, I'm still make ten copies of Stay Live uh album. And on April 5th, Stay Live album, whole album will be on YouTube. So you guys can subscribe to Kai. I think it's Kai Music Group or Kai Family Music. It's going to be linked in the description. That is my new YouTube channel. I'll be posting stuff like this on it constantly, all of the time. And all of our music, Kai Mazaku, Kai Exile, and whoever else decides to join the Kai Family. We are looking for recruits. Are just sending a video, you spitting or singing. And, you know, me and Kai Exile, we will review it. And we do want people to come in. But it is a responsibility. One, you do have to make music. Two, you do have to care for your own mental health. You have to care for helping others with the same thing. This is not an easy job. This is a lifestyle. This is not a group. This is a lifestyle. There is no quitting. There is no leaving. There's only helping yourself and others. And of course, you got to slap that car in front of your name. That means the light. That tells me that you are serious. So if you guys do want to join... No, just let me know. That's the fourth hand track. These things kind of come fast. I might consider catching one of these one one of these days. But it's a Monday, so I think you know, they, everything's faster on a Monday. Besides that work, that's the slowest day. But yeah, just if you're going through anything, just message Kai. Message me. 
on you know Kai. Damn, what is my freaking Instagram name? Kai Music Group or Kai Family Music. You guys can find it on my main Instagram, Kamazaku, because I will be uploading you know skits and bits of this video and posts promoting that page as well. We really do care about helping you, uh, you guys uh, mental health. I just had a conversation with Kai out the other day. Right now he's in Colombia. And, you know, I got to call him to finish the conversation. I really want to let him know. And it's hard for both of us to open up to each other all the way. Even though we know we care for each other and we'll die for each other. It's just, we just, we're, we're like, I don't know. We're like, oh, my God. I don't know how to even freaking describe it. It's like we're bonded, but it's so hard to freaking express ourselves fully because I know damn well I'll probably cry. And I don't want to cry in front of him, but I think it's the same freaking way. We're both too freaking stubborn for our own good. But I love him that I'll freaking die for Kai out any second of the day. Any second of the day. Unquestionable. And he has a project dropping too this year. And we're going to drop a collaborative uh, project by the, end of this, by the end of this year. And I promise you that we're going to get that done. We're not going to fabricate because not our lives are at stake. Your guys' lives are at stake too. And... I just, I just wish people would take mental health more serious. But we do live in this generation. A lot of people are taking it more serious. But I feel like it really, really needs to take off a lot faster than it is now. Because I feel like we are wasting time. And people are going too soon. And I just want everybody to stay alive. And that's why I really named that, that project Stay Alive. So thank you. Um, you know, I think his name Chicken Something for Radio. Or you let, whatever the YouTube guy's name is. And all the other ones, I kept, I'm trying to think of Neo, Alex. God, I, you got the, the guys who regularly comment. Thank all of you guys. You know, you guys really been supporting me for years, checking up on me when I'm on my hiatus. You guys would give me in a heartbeat. Well, you guys really shouldn't have, dude. I, I freaking suck. And I'm sorry. And I will also want to give a special thanks. And let me see what this is at so I can tell them 3705. A special thanks. And. You guys might be shocked by this. Special thanks to uh, Sir Richard Wallace, aka you guys may know him as Double Four Anime. Um, mind you, I don't speak on everything, and I'm gonna you know fix that and start doing it. Which a lot of you guys don't know. Uh, I think about three, four months ago, Double Four Anime messaged me randomly, and I was I was going through the motions, dude, on <laughs> in real life. But he messaged me on Instagram randomly. Just to check on my mental health. Unless you guys know me and we dropped that beef we had over a year ago. So it's like it was it was no beef, but it was no friendship there either. But we just dropped it. Um it was just petty. We were just saying shit. I don't know. I was too fucking mad and frustrated mostly at myself than anybody else. And I, I just let loose and you know, double four his trolling ass ways and shit. And we, we just going at each other. It was a bad mix, but he checked on my mental health uh via DM on Instagram. You see, some TJ, it's easy to find me on Instagram. Just type in my name, and uh, I'll pop up. Double Four did it. So, he, he checked my mental health, asked him, though, how am I doing? And he prayed, you know, for the best. And that that shit really touched me on a completely different level. Somebody who I freaking hated less than a year ago at that time, checking to making sure that I'm staying alive, that I'm doing all right, that I'm healthy. So I would like to give a special thanks to you, dude. I, mean, I appreciate that. And, you know, I'm hoping his relationship with his father, you know, gets a lot better than it was, you know, four or five, six years ago. I haven't really checked in on him. So that's something I am going to have to do. And I will send him this video. And I know I said no edits, but my phone died while I was, was like recording yesterday. So I have to finish it now. But, you know, God bless up for anime, a.k.a. Richard Rollins. Um, you know, good job on um, Tim for never for like holding down like the anime community for as long as he has been. Um, I felt like you know maybe I could have been a little bit more nice to him despite his views, his earlier views on this anime. And if you guys can hear the sirens, I'm sorry about that. Because you know, although know, I disagree with him, you know, calling him all those names, mind you, we are like we're the same people. We're peas in the same pod. You guys watching me. Double four, Richard, King of Lightning. We most likely grew up outcast and had to go through some shit. We're peas in the same pod. There's already people looking down on the anime community, you know, for the shit that happened back then and people, you know, committing murders and they're blaming anime for it. And I feel like we really haven't been a community and I have been part of that, you know, problem. Now I have been out here dissing niggas saying fuck y'all. And you know, to a certain extent, you know, I don't really care about it anymore. I've been through enough problems of my own. 
to sit here and care about anybody else's you know views i don't even watch like anime reviews anymore unless i really 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 fuck with the person you know you, my fans that have been fans for a very long time they have started doing youtube and have started doing anime reviews oh yeah i watch you guys faithfully y'all my niggas i'm gonna always hold y'all down because that held me down and like just to, so you guys know my youtube doesn't it's currently right now isn't paying me uh i don't know I plot to try to pay for it again. They they do all they nut shit. I just want you guys to know this this isn't for money, ad revenue. This is straight from the heart. I don't know what the fuck this channel is gonna do. I'm still gonna be on this channel regardless they pay me or not because it's bigger than money. It's more about mental health. Now that doesn't mean I'm gonna stop doing anime shit. No, I got like 50,000 videos saved, topless saved. I told y'all I was gonna be on my shit, and I'm not joking. But I'm still gonna be making these. I still gotta check on your mental health to make sure it's okay. And you know, growing up on, I'm not going to say growing up on YouTube, but you know, growing up making these YouTube videos, you know, I'll get comments and fans saying, you know, I get bullied at school or bullied at home, mind you. We all are like nerds in the same pod, but as I said, some people have it differently, mind you. I'm a nerd with a build, a nerd who can fight and have, who has like practice in mixed martial arts. I don't get bullied in high school. I didn't get bullied in high school. I probably only got bullied in seventh or eighth grade. But when I started, you know, high school, oh yeah, I was on my shit. You guys see me, I'm quite, I'm quite sizable. I'm five foot nine, so, you know. I can do a move around and shit. I'm still small. But, you know, I haven't had that thing to where, oh, the jock is bullying me. No, I would I, I fight the niggas in school. Niggas don't want to fucking fight. Straight up. Niggas is pussy. And that's not something to brag about no, on my part. It's just that, you know, I had the goal to stand up for myself. And a lot of people don't. And they look to my videos after they go get home from school or from, you know, work from bully, being bullied or, you know, mentally drained. And they watch my shit. For refreshment, so I fuck with y'all, and this is for y'all. And if anybody just you know that was feeling that way, this is also for you guys too. And I'm just sorry I had to go through it, but you know, you guys watched me grow up. You know, from a 15 year old kid on here, the spewing bullshit to you know a 21 year old man spewing more bullshit. But you know, you guys stayed, and uh, that's the most important part. And before I even go to my next topic, uh, for my fans that do live in Philadelphia, you guys do want to see me link up this Saturday. I'll be at my friend uh, and Timmy's, the artist and Timmy show. Uh, it's going to be a 15th arch. I give you guys the address. Just DM me on Instagram. And I give you guys the address. Show up there. It's going to be food. It's going to be uh, music. It's, it's him performing. I'm going to be helping them host. It's going to be a good time. Um, I think it's like a $10 entry fee or maybe $15. i will let you guys know in the DM. Um, you guys want to take a picture with me, whatever. I'm not going to charge y'all none of that shit. We're just going to chill. We're going to hang out like we knew each other for the past 20 years. So I really do want to see a lot of y'all, and I appreciate y'all, and I love y'all. Y'all niggas from Philly too, man. Y'all just come and see your boy. Check him out, mental health, and we can just have a full on conversation. Shout out to Kai Exiled again because I said, man, that's my brother, man. I love him, and he's been helping me with this shit. Along with my other friends, and me and him, we are going to be making videos like this. We're not just here making music, trying to get money, get clout. No, we really want to help people. We really want to save people's lives, and that's why we're doing this. So you know. Just thank you guys for everything that y'all have done. Everything that y'all watched me been through. God bless y'all. God bless Double for Anime. For Never World, King of Lightning. I even, uh, you know, film for giving this an, um, Mad Black Anime Forever. Or that shit that happened with that, um, what is the app called? I don't even know. Discord shit. I don't even care about it anymore. Son TJ, um, I don't know. Um, I'm just not mad anymore. I just hope that you don't. Throw, throw more shade on shade on me that's that's weird especially when i was going through that i didn't need that extra push something to push me over the ass like i was saying with my old manager well she still is a manager but she's not my manager directly i just don't need to be you know going through stuff like that and right now i'm in a much better spot i'm in a much better place making this video talking to you guys i woke up got in the shower got my clothes on went right back to the same exact spot because i'm not finished um you guys know the news been uh, a lot of gang not even gang violence there's violence in general going on in these hoods man um uh rest in peace to nipsey hustle uh a black entrepreneur who only really wanted better for his community was gunned down and you got the people here calling illuminati government i feel like it's just disrespecting the man and his family to, and, and um not quite acknowledging what goes on around neighborhoods like these like behind me dumb shit happens all the time and I feel like the more you guys point and y'all blame other people, blame yourselves, blame blame the community, blame the people inside the fucking community. It's not going to get better. You keep pointing your fingers everywhere else. Oh, the white man did this. No, the government did that. Mind you, they do do a lot of fuck shit. But this is 
If you guys seen the video, but I urge you not to fucking see, and I'm sad I seen it. That it's, it's fucked up with uh, the way that man went out. To go back three times to make sure he was dead, shoot him in his head, and kick him in his head while he's already dead, and the runoff. This is the most sloppy bullshit of all time for you guys to say the government assassinated him. Fuck no. That guy was a fucking weirdo, and I hope they find that nigga an awful. I know we speaking on positivity and everything, but that's just unfucking called for. Some people just don't really need to be here. And all they're going to do is hurt more people, let somebody do something about it. And that's just cold hard facts. Um, before I go, once again, please listen to the Stay Alive album. That album, if I had not wrote that album, I would have died. Mind you, it's a free album. I leave the link in the description, the link in the top comment, and also please support the single from the album Tonic Water, which is now on Spotify. I really finally got on Spotify, and I'm super happy, and I'm super stoked about that. Yo, like, dude, like, I know it's not a big deal for some people, but for me, it's like I never thought I'd be making music later on. Like, it's on Spotify, Epic Music, excuse me. My shit is on all streaming sites. So if you guys have not heard Tonic Water yet, it is on all streaming sites. Whether you have Apple Music, Pandora, MP3 Bear, Spotify, SoundCloud, and it'll be on YouTube on the 5th, on April 5th of this month. Yes, this month, April 5th, will be on YouTube. Also, along with the Tonic Water music video, which will be dropping on the Kai Mazaku page. And please follow the Kai Clan Music YouTube channel. That is my brand new channel. I'll be uploading videos just like this and giving it to you guys. Along with Kai Exile, he'll upload his stuff. He'll upload his freestyles. I'll upload his songs. He'll upload his songs. I'll upload my songs. And we will have a joint project. So I really feel like our music can, is capable of saving the world. That's why I really I tattooed Kai on my freaking torso twice. I want you to guys know this is not a fad. This is a lifestyle. If you want to join, just know this, that this is a lifestyle. It's more than a fad or a trend. You have to stick with this for the rest of your life because I will to my dying breath. I love you guys. I love you guys from the bottom of my heart. I'm trying to make sure I'm not forgetting anything, but please follow that YouTube page. Subscribe to my YouTube channel, my brand new YouTube channel. We all just subscribe to this one. Just subscribe to that one. If not subscribe to this one, subscribe to this one and that one so i appreciate it i love y'all so much and uh my man who, who goes by the name of ali um for all the shit you're going through trust me man it's like looking in the mirror reading those messages you sent me um it broke my heart and it brought me down to tears today man and i just want to want to let you know that i love you i consider you a brother dog and you need anything if i'm capable of doing it best believe i, I will be down there to help man it, it, guys if you watching please, please pray for my brother's mental health dog because I'm, he he going through the same shit I went through. He's probably even worse on his part, depending, depending on how he's feeling. And it breaks my heart to know that more people are going through this. That's why I fucking go so hard to make sure nobody has to go through this shit no more. This is why Kai Exiled and Kai Mazaku go so hard to, you know, help people with mental health. People who want to kill themselves every day, every week. It is not a joke. And I, I feel like we do live in the current generation to where mental health is taking more serious. And, I, and thank God for that. And we're here to help it through our voices and through our music. Um, and that's what we're going to do. So please also go to the Instagram page, Kai Music Group. We're there. We're there to help you. Anything is DM us. We're always here to help. We're saving the world with our voices, with videos like these, and our music. So I love y'all. Thank God for watching. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Dragon Ball Z, Naruto, uh, my hero. Videos coming very soon. One Punch Man confirmed for season two. I'm excited about that. I'm going to review that. And some more enemies, too. I, it's one I've seen on Hulu, too. That I've been meaning to freaking see. I can't think of the name right now. But I just want to let y'all know. Thank you. Uh, my suicidal thoughts are close to gone or if not they're gonna be going after this video i think y'all i don't want to kill myself i gotta live for me i gotta live for kai and i i relay this message in my album my free album stay alive in the outro i really want you guys to listen to it not to get me more streams i really think it can help save your life because when i played it here live on youtube after that after i cut the cameras off them cameras went off tears rushed down my face because i had to reflect of everything i've been through just to write some shit like that and I just want to thank y'all, man. Um, the next step is Help Album. Dropping 2020. And we're going to go on tour for that one. Thank you guys for watching. I'm Kai Masaku. The spirit is Kai Exile. Thanks.
Oh, my bad. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, you shit. You ain't saying you ain't saying Yeah, yeah. You ready? Yeah, we ready. All right. Kyle shit. All right, I got you. I'm Darth Vader, your father, with the power to pull a ship out of the sky, not a bother. I use my pain to make you hurt, to choke you out like a collar, and enslave all your people, make them work to death for a dollar. So, of course, you never asking how I'm doing. If there was an evil daddy award, I'd be a shoo Even the death of Sith Lords is not a true one, but I kind of wish that it was. What am I doing? Every second of my life is just a chapter of pain. I think I murdered my own wife and sent my kid down a drain. My mind is going insane. I barely have half a brain. All I can ever do is really just endure it and train. It fucking hurts to move my body because it ain't mine. It fucking hurts to kill the children. Though I say that it's fine, except mine. I fucking love you. Come on home. We can live together. Fuck the rebels. I blow them up with a dome in the sky. I understand your confusion, so there's no need to ask why. I'll tell you all about my reasons in the ship while we fly. At least I'll try, though it's hard to explain. Wait, before we go on further, let me ask you your name. Luke? That's pretty common, but it's also quite plain. Mine was Anakin. Remember it, it equals the pain. Such a drain on both my mind and soul. I use the dark side of the force just to feel whole. There's a hole in my chest, and it's about as black as I am. I'm thinking you could feel it. After all, we from the same fam. Damn, so that's really it? You hate me too? That's fine. I mean, what else could I have ever expected from you? I have spent at least 24 hours thinking I hate me too. All of the murders, the slaughters, yeah, they're all true. I hope you can forgive me, son, for I love you. It's okay, Dad. Rest knowing that I got some love too. Let me look at you before I die. Now, now that we're familiar, I use my own eyes. I'll never leave your side. You can find me in the sky. After all, we're skywalkers. But for now, Luke, goodbye. Damn. <laughs> and I still fucked up on And y'all niggas <laughs> mumbling? Still fucked up on a little bit, but shit. L- listen, That's bro. Listen, <laughs> right? I mean, yo, follow my bro, though. This, this shit is crazy. Hey. Let me know who you is, bro. You... Oh, yo, that's the Kai Exile right there, bro. Part of the Kai family. Follow it. Oh, this shit, nigga. Yo, that... <laughs> mean... He got the rook, rook boots on this shit. <laughs> one gave me ass like a pamper, the other one had my legs weaker than Yamsha. So I stick my tongue on them hoes like a villain. Cause both of this pussy was broader than Krillin. They tickle my pickle, they know what come after. They play with my kiss like a piece of a pastor. Be ready to zap, so the strike in that matter. Cause this doesn't matter, no marching, no mavericks. It's not an LP, this is.